everyone. Welcome to our live worship experience here at Ocean View. And again, a special thank you to all of you that have been tuning in. And uh, we want to encourage you as you're online uh, to try and comment in the comment section and uh, stay in touch. Again, while we can't gather physically, um, we hope that you're staying together uh, through the platforms, the mobile platforms that we have uh, currently. We wrap up a message series entitled Lost and Found today. And I I'm very, very excited to be able to share this because, again, um, you know, only God knew the timing of this message series and how it would apply to our lives today. And one thing we've learned over the course of these last few weeks is uh, to begin to value that which is most important. And today we're going to take a look at an older brother who seems to has, have lost his perspective on life. And so I, I look forward to sharing with you and for all of us to learn together what's most important and how we need to be able to treat that. I would encourage you that as the, the music is played, feel free to go ahead and sing. If you're a bad singer, make sure you're in front of everyone else so they don't hear you. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, um, now's the time to be able to tune out all the distractions. Um, gather together. Uh, if you have children and students, once again, I want to encourage you uh, to make sure whether you've already done it or maybe you haven't done it yet, but later in the day, to be able to worship together as a family, whether you have a preschooler, elementary, middle schooler, or high schooler. Um, if you have any questions or if you have technical difficulties, you can go to OVB ovbc.org and you can go ahead and click on the website and you can find a link to our worship service today as well. May God bless you and again I'm thankful that you've joined us for worship. Hi everybody we are the, the Murphy, Murphy family. family and we are here worshiping with you from beautiful Myrtle Beach and we are the church. My name is Melissa Turner I'm here in Myrtle Beach worshiping with you online this morning and I just wanted to say, I am the church. Hey guys, I'm Kaylee Mischler. And I'm Max Mischler. And we live in Southwood and Surfside Beach. And, and we, we are, are the, the church. church. Hello everyone. My name is Javier. Hello, I'm Corinne. I hope everyone is safe. Corinne and I are here in our home in the Grand Dunes in Myrtle Beach. And we're worshiping with you. And we are the church. Have a good one. Sing with us wherever you are. We're going to worship together this morning. Child 
Ocean View Church. Things are looking a little different, but we're going to worship together and do the best we can either way. So we're thrilled that you're with us wherever you may be in the world via live stream, whatever social platform you're using to watch this. Feel free to communicate with one another. Um, give each other love and shout outs, messages. Let us know where you're from. Maybe it's your first time. Let us know that. We'd love to hear from you. If it is your first time, if it's your hundredth time, we would love for you to take advantage of um, texting the, the word OV Connect to the number 77222. Just let us know who you are, where you're from, and um, if any prayer requests, any needs that you might have that maybe we can help you with, we'd just love to do that. Um, pray for you and just be here together in a community of worship. Even though we can't be in the same room together, we can still worship together in spirit. So we're glad that you're here. We're welcoming you here, and um, we're going to get back to worshiping together um, some more songs that we hope will lift your spirits.
wherever you are, pray with me this morning. Oh God, we worship you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. God, we thank you that in these weird times that we're living, that God, we have hope in you. That God, the world right now is asking for answers. They're asking for why is this happening? God, use us as the church to be able to point them, maybe not necessarily to why this is all happening, but who we can put our trust in while this is happening, Lord. God, wherever we may be this morning, across this country, across this world, Father, we are so thankful that we can unite together, that we are a church, not because of a building, but we're a church because of a movement of people that have joined together in proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. So God, I pray, Father, that as we enter this time of hearing from your word, God, you would speak to us, Father. Give us words today that would help us in these days ahead, Lord. God, we love you, and we ask this in your name. Amen. everybody. Oh, it's been a week, hasn't it? I, I, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, this past week, I, I had to make a run to the grocery store. And, and I don't know if, if you're like me, but I am a little bit of a germaphobe already. So as I was walking into uh, the grocery store, um, I, I felt like a game of Frogger. If you're under the age of 30, um, I want you to ask your parents right now, what, what is he talking about? But in the game Frogger, you know, you have to avoid traffic. You have to jump on the logs. You have to watch out for the alligators. And I literally felt like that with my shopping cart in the, the, the grocery store as I was going through. Because walking in, there, I saw a friend of mine who was at the deli counter. And he's sitting at the deli counter. And as I'm coming up, I'm, I'm keeping uh, my comfortable social distancing of, of 12 feet. You see, I know they say six, but for me, it's 12. So I'm about 12 feet away. And uh, he starts coming right up to me. And I, I'm, I'm starting to back away. But then as I'm backing away, I've got 12 feet on the other side. I'm coming next to the next person. So it's got me all messed up. I don't know about you, but I'm freaking out left and right. Um, I made it through the grocery store. It was good. But everything is kind of backwards today, isn't it? Um, you, usually when you walk up and see someone, you give them a hug, you shake a hand, you put your arm around them, and now it's kind of like the plague, literally. We just kind of hold back. Um, the story that we're going to unpack today is a little bit like that. You see, um, we see, obviously, a, a loving father. We see a younger son. If you've been walking this road with us for the last few weeks, uh, you've seen us talk about them. But today we're going to focus on one more character to this story that Jesus introduces. And it's the older brother. And you see, the older brother, um, he's going to find himself in a place where, again, it, it's awkward. It's, he, he knows what he should be doing, but he finds himself in the wrong position. And I think that happens to you and I very, very often in life, especially nowadays. It, it creates conflict in our life where maybe we know the right thing to do, but our emotions uh, or maybe our thought processes move us to a different way of doing things. And Jesus is going to tell this story, and he's going to unpack this part of the story, and maybe we might fall into this category of becoming from time to time the older brother. So we're going to jump into a book of the New Testament. It's uh, called the book of Luke. And Luke is a doctor and he writes this letter. And if you're new to Christianity or just joining us, we welcome you. We're really, really excited and, uh, and I'm looking forward to sharing this part of the story. Let me catch you up. You see, we, we have a younger son who told his dad, I want all my money now. And so his dad, um, which 
went against all wisdom in the culture of that day. He decided because of his love for the younger son to cash in um, and really sell part of his estate to be able to give his son one-third of all that he owned. That younger son, he didn't really care uh, much about anybody else. He just cared about himself. And selfishly, he took all of that and he wasted it. And last week, we, we listened and, and heard this story about how he wasted all of the resources, but then ultimately came to his senses. And so as he came back to his father's estate, he expected punishment, but instead we learned the love of an amazing father. And he represented our heavenly father. And that father um, embraced him, loved him, and welcomed him back home and restored this younger son. Well, we're going to pick up the story from there because all of a sudden they threw a party for this younger son. And the older son is in a place where all of a sudden he's going to enter the scene of the story. So let's pick it up, Luke chapter 15, beginning in verse 25. It says this, Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. And when he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants what was going on. The servant said, your brother is back, he was told. And your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. You know, when I look at that story, um, right off the bat, we see that meanwhile, the older brother was out in the fields. And, and it caught my attention that that older brother walks in and he, and he he addresses a servant, and that servant knows that his brother has returned. That servant is celebrating with everybody else. Everybody is in the moment. Everybody is celebrating what's most important, except for the older brother. You see, the older brother, he was in the fields at the time. And, and I know that we look at that and we think geographically that the, the older brother was somewhere and he was working hard and he just happened to come in, but but I think theologians and myself would tell you that that meant much more, that Jesus was illustrating a point. He was basically saying this, the older brother was in a place where truthfully he shouldn't have been. It was as if, like we've talked about this boundary here, that on this side of the boundary represents what the father is doing and the father's perspective and the father's protection and the way that the father would call us to live. And, and if we live on this side of the boundary and this side of the fence, um, we find ourselves making wise choices. It says that meanwhile, the older brother was out in the field. And while the older brother was out in the field, the older brother wasn't paying attention to what was most important. A lowly servant in that cultural time is celebrating the most important thing, a servant understood what was most important. A servant wasn't missing the moment. But the older brother found himself in a place where he wasn't paying attention and he didn't realize what was going on. You know, I think that happens to us in life. I think sometimes we lose perspective. And, and, and I don't think a lot of us watching online, I don't think it's our desire to find ourselves out in the field. I think our desire for most of us is to live in this protection, to live on this side of the boundary, and to understand the moment and to react the wise way within the moment. But sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes we begin to focus on, on what's less important. Maybe it's our jobs. Maybe it's our finances. Maybe it's our popularity. And maybe over a period of time, we can begin losing perspective of what's most important and find ourselves out in the field and becoming the last to wake up and the last to realize what's most important. You know, I think this past week, in these past couple weeks, God himself has allowed all of us to slow down for some of us. And a lot of us have come to the realization of what's most important. It's almost as if we've been forced to realize what's most important. And during these times where we have a little bit more capital of focus, where we don't have as many distractions, but we're realizing what's most important, I truly believe that in these moments we can get back to this side of the fence and we can realize what God expects of us. Let me illustrate this another way. I remember when I was... Um, home and 11 and 12 years old with my brother. We had a, a home in South Florida. And in the front of our house, um, we had uh, these crank windows. And, and they were almost like jealousy windows. They, each of them had a compartment. And when you cranked them, they, each individual panel would open up. 
And my brother and I, we, we loved playing baseball. And so we would have wiffle ball games uh, in the front yard all the time. And my dad gave us pretty clear instructions. He said, you know, sons, he said, I just don't want you throwing a ball near the house. I don't want the windows, one of the windows breaking. And so if you could do me a favor and if you could just move away, move out of the front yard because I don't want the windows broken. Yeah, 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 dad, sure, 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 sure. Well, what my dad didn't understand is, is the front of the house made a very good backdrop. I mean, we didn't want to go chasing the ball if there was a foul ball hit. We didn't want to go chasing it. And so if it was just a wiffle ball. And so if we just fouled off the wiffle ball and it, and it hit the house, it wasn't going to do any damage. And so our dad doesn't know what he's talking about. So my brother and I, we decided when my dad was away at work, we were in the front yard. My brother said, stand in front of the house, get your bat, and we're going to play. And we were having a blast, and we were playing baseball, wiffle ball in the front yard, and it was great. And all of a sudden, my brother decided to throw a pitch. And he threw that pitch, and I fouled it off. And all of a sudden, the ball went behind me, and it was just a plastic wiffle ball. But the next sound that I heard was not the sound that I wanted to hear. It was a I turned around, and sure enough, one of those crank windows was shattered by this wiffle ball. Well, i got to be honest with you, we didn't want to wait for our father to come home. We wanted to just run away as far as we could. But my dad came home and saw the window, and he scolded us, and we were in trouble. Uh, we had to pay for the replacement of that window. And my dad looked at us and said, do not play in front of the house again. So my brother and I, we, about a few months later, once again, we got tired of chasing the ball down the street. So we decided, you know, dad doesn't know best. So what we did was we actually went ahead and we taped the ball up to soften it because surely it, it couldn't break a new window. Well, sure enough, we got in there and I was batting once again. My brother threw a pitch. I fouled it off. The next sound that I hear, true story, window breaking again. My brother and I, literally, we left and we went away. We came home, let's just say we were in big trouble. We were grounded for I can't tell you how long. Obviously, we had to pay for the window once again, which we didn't have money, so we had to agree to cut the lawn. And So all of a sudden, my dad went ahead and he threatened us and said, don't you ever do this again. I'm, I'm not kidding and I'm not making this up. My brother and I thought we knew best. We thought we know we're a lot smarter than our father. So we decided after a period of months that we were going to go ahead and we were going to use the house as a backdrop again. So we tied up an afghan. Again, if you're under the age of 30, ask your parents right now what an afghan is. But we tied up an afghan in front of the windows, had the ball taped. And sure enough, I kid you not, I went ahead and I fouled the pitch off. Not only did it go straight up in the air, it went over the afghan but it didn't hit just any window. It hit the same window, and I heard three times, same window, broke it every time. I don't remember much after that when my dad came home, when we woke up a couple months later out of the hospital. No, I'm just teasing. But the truth is, is that we didn't learn our lesson. We kept wanting to stray away from our father's advice. You see, I think in life, our desire for what we want is greater at times than living under the Father's protection, his wisdom, and his guidance. And so right now, I can think of no better time than for us to take Jesus' story and be mindful that the older brother was out in the fields, the older brother wasn't paying attention to what was most important, and Jesus wants all of us to really not miss the moment. And right now, Today, this week, while we have a little bit more capital, it's our responsibility really to tune in to what the Father wants most of us. Here at Ocean View, we say there are four, four ways that we can live our life when we live on this side of the boundary, when we live in the Father's protection. And these four areas are very simple, and they go like this. First, we need to hear from God. Those of us that are believers in Jesus Christ, it's really, really important that we take a moment and we listen to what the Father has to say. That when the Father says, Terry, you shouldn't tape that ball up. Terry, you shouldn't play in front of the house. Your Father has said not to do it. That when God speaks to us in the same way that we actually listen to what he's telling us. 
that we talk to others about what God's done in and through our life. This past week, I've had the privilege of sharing with so many people who are worried, who are stressed, who are fearful. And so talking about what God can do and how God in the moment, if we fall under his protection, can help us is incredible. We need to talk to God. I can think of no better time than right now in a time where we feel out of control than to be able to go to the one that is in control and to begin to talk to God. And then finally, to actually behave like we believe. And that's something that every Christian right now, that instead of panicking, instead of really being fearful, that we live our lives in such a way of telling everybody, our God knows what happened yesterday, he knows today, and he knows tomorrow. He owns everything, and I am not going to stress. When we live that way, we come out of the fields, and we come back to understanding what's most important. And I love it because Jesus continues the story because all of a sudden the older brother comes in. He hears a party going on. Yes, Jesus said there was dancing and singing and partying, but all of a sudden the older brother stopped at the boundary. And we pick up the story, Luke 15, 28. The older brother was angry and he wouldn't go in. He was frustrated at what was going on. He saw his brother dancing, singing, everybody celebrating and he was angry. You see, life is not fair. It's not happening the way that I want it to happen. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. I've been doing and making wise choices. This brother, he has been making bad choices, and so what if he finally has come back and he's finally understood and he's finally come to his senses? So what? It's not fair. It's not right. I think I do that all the time in culture when all of a sudden I think that I deserve more. And I love watching how Jesus says that the, his father responds. Take a look at this. It says his father came out and begged him. His father came out of the house and he begged and pleaded with the oldest son. Son, your younger brother has come to his senses. Don't you see what's most important? Don't you realize that, yes, while I appreciate that you're out in the fields and you're working hard, you are missing it. Moms, dads, those of us that are professionals and have careers, now is a time. If you have children at home, I can see the father coming to us at times and saying, Terry, I appreciate that you have a passion for ministry and you're called to ministry, but don't you dare miss what's most important in your family. Don't you miss those moments with your family, with your children, of pouring in and giving what's most required in the moment. Our Heavenly Father begs us to pay attention to what's most important important. You see, here's the truth. The Father's greatest desire is for us to remember what's most important. His greatest desire is not for us to get lost in what we're doing in the fields, but to always remember that when we have the right perspective, we live under the Father's protection. I was in Target about five years ago, and my son, Connor, we were walking down the electronics line, and he all of a sudden saw uh, a video game uh, station. And so as we were there, he said, Dad, can I go play? And I said, yes, you can go play, but we're going to leave in just a minute. So a minute went by. I gave him an extra minute because I didn't want the wrath of Khan to happen, if you know what I mean. Star Trek reference. You can look that up. And so as we're standing there, all of a sudden I said, Connor, it's time to go. And he says, Dad, Dad, just 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds. So I, I made a, a poor choice, and I said, all right, 30 more seconds. I came back 30 seconds later. I said, Connor, it's time to go. He ignored me. Connor, it's time to go. He ignored me. And so all of a sudden, I just walked away from him. And he didn't look to where the father was going. He stayed, and he played. I hid. He was in eye shot of me, but I hid behind a, a, an aisle for about 30 seconds. And finally, my son woke up from his reality, and he looked for the Father's protection. And the look on his face was, was sure terror. And all of a sudden, you saw the panic. Now, it felt like about five minutes had gone by, but really it was more about 30 seconds. And finally, after about 30 seconds, I came out from the aisle, 
And my son had tears in his eyes and he came and he grabbed me. And I looked at him and I said, son, I love you. But you have to pay attention to what I say. You have to live under my protection. You see, my son lost his perspective in that moment and it was a great teaching lesson. And there are times that we lose our perspective as well. Every day we should pray and ask God for his perspective. My greatest fear is that when this time comes to an end and and life becomes more of a routine again, is that we're all going to lose our perspective of what's most important. How many of us right now are thankful for our jobs? How many of us are thankful for restaurants, for grocery stores, for hospitals, for sports, for arts, for freedom? You see, what God allowed for all of us through this virus to gain back is a little bit of our perspective. It's as if God has called us in from the field and said, you need to come back and you need to understand what's most important and you need to gain perspective. So he picked the story back up because all of a sudden the older brother is sitting there. The father is pleading and the brother replied, the oldest brother replied, all these years I've slayed for you and I've never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time you never gave me even one goat for a feast with my friends. Here once again the older brother shows us his perspective. And really, it's about himself. You know, one of the easiest ways to understand if you are outside in the fields, if you're away from the Father's protection, is to ask yourself a simple question. Who is most important in my train of thought? Do I put myself first before anybody else? Sometimes it's really, really important to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, to put someone before you before you make decisions. Here's the truth. On the other side of the fence, we can begin to develop an entitlement mentality. I can imagine that older brother sitting in the fields. And I can imagine every day while his younger brother was off and spending money like crazy, I can imagine that older brother sitting in the fields and saying, that worthless younger brother of mine, He caused my father pain. He caused my father to sell his property. That has affected me because now our worth, our net worth has lessened in value because that younger brother, he couldn't be patient. He couldn't be respectful. He did all the wrong things. You know what, God? I just hope that you go ahead and smite him because you know what? I'm better than my younger brother. I make the better choices. I am a better position. And so all of a sudden, I can imagine that older brother developing an entitled mentality, which says this, I am better than someone else. In fact, I deserve more. I'm better than this. If you're, while you're sitting at home, I really want to lean in right now and say, be cautious. Be cautious when you sit and stew. Because that kind of stew develops an entitlement mentality that is dangerous. You see, you're no better than anybody else. All of us have the opportunity and the love and the grace to come to our Heavenly Father and to be under his protection. We are no better than anyone else. The older son, he says this, Yet when this younger brother, this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. And once again, we see the the older brother losing perspective and telling us, how dare you celebrate what's most important? How dare you care about this younger brother of mine? In fact, I don't even want to call him my younger brother. It's your youngest son. He's dead to me. I want to remind you of something that we learned a few weeks ago. God never came to make us better than anybody else. He called us to be different. If you're a follower of Jesus and you're watching this, I don't care whether you're in Myrtle Beach, whether you're in the United States, or wherever you're at around the world watching, God never called you to be better than anybody else, Christian. He called you to be different than everybody else. I'm so proud of our church, and I'm so proud of churches around our country during a time like this. 
while a lot of people are hunkering down for good reason. I'm so proud of the Christians who are putting themselves in harm's way right now and saying, you know what, I can volunteer. I can take a step of faith. And when there is a need, and notice I said a need, not necessarily a want, but a need from our local officials, then let the church be the first to step up and to be able to help because we understand that we're no better than anybody else. He's called us to be different and to care and to love one another. So we take a look at what the father has said. Let's look at his response. His father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. You know, the heavenly father, when we engage him, when we listen for him, when we talk to him, he reminds us that, Terry, you don't need to worry about anybody else and what they have and, and, and how fair things are. You don't have to worry about that. Because when you live under my protection, I want to remind you of something. Everything I have is yours. Don't miss this. Jesus said to all of us, everything the Father has is ours. All of his resources, all of his love, all of his compassion, eternity. Do you know that God wants to give you everything today? He wants to give you resources. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to give you wisdom beyond understanding. He wants to give you peace in the time of fear. And he wants to give those of us that have never trusted him eternity. Today is such a great day to ask yourself the question, am I out in the field or am I under the Father's protection? And God is calling you to come home. God is calling some of you to start engaging and talking with him again. God is calling you because he wants, with an open hand, to give you everything that he has. You know, this. I close by sharing um, a devotional that I shared with our staff team this week. We were all meeting on a, a Zoom meeting and computer, and we were all in different locations. And in our devotional that we do as a staff, I, I was just reading, um, again, in this same um, book of the Bible. And it talks about how we're to live under the Father's protection and, and the way in which we're to act with how we give our love, how we give our, um, our thankfulness, how we give our resources, and it's how we live um, life with an open heart and an open hand. And I want to read you this. This comes from Luke chapter 6, verse 38, and read it to you. Jesus says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over, poured into your lap, the amount you give will determine the amount you give back. You know, there are many ways that, that the Jewish people at that time measured um, spices, measured um, you know, ounces. And sometimes they would go ahead and allow you to pour those spices in, but they wouldn't allow you to press it down to make room for more. They, they, would, they would allow it to just bunch up, and then that was a way to be able to you know, say, no, no, that's enough, that, that's all you get. And Jesus was telling his brothers and sisters, and he was saying, look, if you have a heart and an open hand to give of yourself, then I'm going to tell you how you should give. You should give in such a way where it's measured, where when you pour into someone else, don't stop. Go ahead and push down the amount you're giving and then pour more. And then push that down and pour more. And then you know what? Go ahead and heap more on top of it. It, it was a cultural saying of the day to say, look, don't even be skimpy on your measurement when you give. Because whatever you give, here's the promise that the Father has under his protection. That he will return back to you the same, if not more, heaped on upon you. And so while we finish riding this storm out, I want to challenge you. I was watching social media this week, and I see tempers beginning to flare. And my heart breaks when I see Christians posting negative comments to officials or leaders or, or neighbors. And, and we're all stressed. 
But if you are a follower of Jesus, I, I want to challenge you boldly. And I want to tell you something. Now is not a time for you to tear anybody down. In fact, it's never a time because you are no better than anybody else. When you start tearing someone down, when you start becoming impatient with someone, you are out in the field like that older brother. And Jesus says to you and to me, Christian, it is not time for you to lose perspective. It's not time for you to tear someone down. It's time for you to give, to give of your heart, to give of your life, to give of all that God has given you. Because if you do that, he will return back to you that much more. And you will inspire a generation to God's love and his protection. So followers of Jesus, knock it off. Understand what God has called us to. And live in such a way where let it be the church's time, your time, to give all of who you are so that this country, this nation, this world sees the light of Jesus like never before. It's time to gain your perspective. I pray this week that you will hear from God, that you will talk about how good he is, that you will talk to him, and that you will live life right now behaving like you believe. Would you pray with me? Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for our brothers and sisters. I thank you, God, for how we see you moving right now. And yes, we're impatient, God. Yes, we've allowed, Father, this time um, to really get to us at times. But God, I thank you for uh, the moments where we've gained perspective. God, I thank you for our health care workers, our firefighters, our law enforcement, our officials who are on the front lines right now, God, and they are putting their own safety at risk to be able to lead in a very difficult moment. God, we pray for them. Rather than tearing them down, we pray for them, and we ask, God, that you would give them wisdom, discernment, and that you would help them to help us. And God, while they're helping us, may we find ways to help a neighbor, a friend, May we gain the perspective that you want us to have and may we live our lives showing others what's most important and that is you. So God, we thank you so much for this time to gain perspective and we ask for your hand of blessing and protection. We tell you we love you for it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. I pray that God bless you this week and I thank you again for understanding the church is not a building. You are the church. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. Go and be the church. God bless you. I know, like many of us, um, sometimes we lose perspective, don't we? And it's really, really uh, important, especially in times like this, where God uh, slows the world down and stops everything and reminds us of what is truly most important, most important with our family, most important with what we, gar- what we give our time with, what we give our focus, our energy, and our resources to as well. Um, I want to continue to, uh, to our worship today, and we can worship through giving. And as I've said uh, last week, and uh, I want to encourage you that you can give online. You can text the word Ocean View to 77977. And as you do, um, you fund our ministries. And one of the things I'm very proud of our staff and of our church, um, and over the course of the last couple of weeks, um, I've had the privilege of communicating with a lot of our church members. And we've rallied them in a social distance kind of way. But we've rallied them to be able to meet needs within our community. And it's because of your faithful giving that we're able to continue to be able to meet those needs. I've said it before that uh, in times of crisis, there is no better opportunity for the church than now. It is our privilege to be proactive instead of reactive. And because of your generous and faithful support uh, in giving, we're able to continue to do so. So again, I thank you so much for your faithfulness, and I thank you so much for tuning in with us online. Um, If God spoke to you in an amazing 
amazing way today. And if you'd love to be able to get in contact with any of us, any of our pastors, they are right now are watching online with you and they are more than happy to be able to, to meet you at your point of need and to be able to answer any questions that you have. So comment in the, uh, the comment section uh, on Facebook or if you'd like, you can email at office at obbc.org and we will get those emails and we'll respond back as quickly as possible. Again, I pray that you have an incredible day today as a family, and we look forward to seeing you one day soon. God bless you.